Welcome to part two of our tape reading workshop with William Reardon and Ramon Bogomazov. Part one, which was on Bitcoin, was absolutely riveting. It was so interesting. And tape reading is a really a mastery process. And it's a tremendous study. It's a great skill set. And William and Ramon do a a uh, wonderful weekly tape reading workshop on Monday mornings. And you really are encouraged to check out what they're doing and attend on a weekly basis. But anyway, this is part two. And with that, let's get started because they are just now at the point where Bitcoin is working its way up to critical resistance. And I just can't wait to see what happens. Gentlemen. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. All right, William. Well, we are on this cliffhanger bar. Indeed. Uh, so let's, uh, you know, we said that supply is coming in here. We see that from uh, two sources. The volume shows the spike. So usually that volume spike is suggestive of the presence of the opposing force, which is in this case selling or increase of the supply. We also see this in the result. So and it's kind of interesting concept. I started just like recently talking to um, my students about this in this way. We see that the up bar is still dominating uh, yes. the supply, right? So the upward result is still somewhat- Technically in, an up bar. Yeah. An up bar. So there is some increase there. But the downward result is increasing as well. So I'm calling this, William, a uh, downward result increase in the bullish bar. Uh, and we just see this from the supply tail. And these are could be the first elements of the stop in action, uh, or if uh, uh, supply is coming in and demand is very aggressive, this could be the first elements of the absorption itself. So at this place, we need to figure out with the emergence of the supply, is absorption happening or not? So William, your thoughts on this bar? Well, there's certainly absorption occurring at this level, but when when, when I look at this bar, Robert, the first thing I have to just, how I break this down is, first of all, what does this bar with this volume achieve? Well, we do knife through our first level and we close above it. We get over to here and we break it. And the, don't forget that price pushed up through this resistance level, through all of these supply bars direct to the left. And yes, we do see the presence of supply because we close off the highs. But as you as you rightly said, though, it is still technically an up bar. Uh, how would I interpret this bar? Well, I wouldn't say this is overtly bearish because the, the sellers have emerged where they should, which is at the resistance level. But for me, Roman, it's the background. You know, this here is the absorption process. Uh, like, you, like you said, here at the lows, this is the drive up. Now we've just broken through this resistance level. The market, I don't think, needs to come back into this area to test. We've exhausted all the testing in this environment. So, uh, go, although I see supply here, what does it actually achieve? Well, nothing we have rejected this area but we don't produce a big widespread down bar i mean look at the volume i mean that is an awful lot of volume and buyers ultimately they won that bar because technically it's an up bar so if we're going forward when i see this bar i would be thinking i want to see the nature of the testing which i'm sure that i think you would concur with as well do you have any other additional thoughts or no that's it and that was my next thought uh, and, and that was on, um, could we see the confirmation or the test? Okay. Well, the next bar comes wow. okay. and the, the, there is definitely a result confirmation uh, mm -hmm. of the test of that previous bar where supply occurred. So usually if supply would occur into some kind of uh, strength, then we would be expecting the reaction. Here, we don't have the reaction. Here, we have a resurrection bar. This is a David Weiss term, um, where the price instantly goes into the area that was denied before by the presence of the supply. And that is the confirming uh, um, sign for us and the absorption sign. And the absorption we also see from the volume signature, which is relatively high. Yep. It's smaller um, than the previous bar, but it 
relative to the background, it's definitely we're seeing the presence of what? The presence of the demand that pushes the price up. So I would say that this is a really favorable resolution for all of the emergence of the supply at this level. Really. And what, what I like actually about this bar as well, not only the high volume, which shows a commitment and it's the highest close we've seen for the past month or so, is there's another subtlety of look, strength here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven up days in a row. We haven't seen that mm -hmm. anywhere since the selling climax. Again, another subtlety. Uh, so this testing action, if you're thinking of a test, this is actually very nice testing action. Although there is one thing I would be quite weary of here, Roman, is the angle of ascent. We are rising quite, <laughs> quite hard, quite rising too fast too soon here. Uh, Perhaps I would expect some form of testing, you know, perhaps a little, maybe a little bit of absorption, but uh, time will tell. Let's just see. Yeah, I think on the smaller time frame where supply is coming in, we're going to have that smaller change of behavior, which would be suggestive on the intraday level, not on the daily. Um, some kind of trading range formation, and I remember this spot, you know, like. Uh, the trading range had kind of like this upsloping structure, which also was an element of, of the strength that suggested a continuation to the upside. But we want to acknowledge that this behavior, as William has said, is different from anything that we've seen in the trading range. It's yes. better than this rally. Um, in a way, it's better than the automatic rally here, not by the... Uh, by the size of it, by the distance that the price has traveled, but by the control of the buyers of the environment where multiple days in a row, which we have not had before, uh, the biggest multiple number of days we had off the spring three, here we definitely have more, so seven. This is the control by the buyers, and this is very important for us to note as a change of behavior. Also, but another subtlety here, this is how many bars it took to, to, to fall and this is how many times uh, bars it took to rise. So the selling quality is inferior and the buying quality is good. So again, we disconfirm selling quality, another positive in terms of buying quality. So it's just by combining all of these pieces uh, of the puzzle that helps us to you know, gain that kind or understand the bullish nature of what's occurring here. Yeah, I would say that both duration and verticality is bullish. I mean, sometimes we would have like, uh, verticality is great, but the duration is not there. Um, this is the case where uh, both of those concepts, and those are a little bit more advanced concepts. So for those of you who are not familiar with those, you know, you have to come to our class and, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it there. But in this case, both of them are actually working favorably for the bullish scenario. Okay, well, let's see what happens next. Okay, so we're just continuing to the upside, adding to the bullish picture ability of the price to stay in the upper part of the trading range, even though, uh, you know, there is some kind of diminish and uh, spread here, which might be suggestive that we might be having like a local reaction here. Yeah, I mean, I would label that effort versus result there, Roman. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's just because the volume signature is so high, yeah, right? the volume is higher mm -hmm. than this bar. The 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 spread is restricted in, in movement. I mean, there's an awful lot of supply in here, but the good, but the thing is, it's the sellers that need to prove themselves. And there's an emergence of selling pressure here, but we're still holding. You know, it's still technically an up bar, so that's very very positive. And this is to be expected because we are right slap bang here, right at the top of this selling climax bar. This is completely natural. And this is showing favorable bullish conditions because we're unable to react thus far. And again, mm -hmm. another up bar, another day in uh, green uh, yeah. succession. Uh, and, and I think this is a very important bar, you know, for a lot of our students, because again, there are a lot of mistakes that are being made at this spot. Why? Because short term, we are seeing some kind of diminished upward result, suggestive that we might have maybe a bar or maybe like an intraday reaction to maybe like this level where supply has pushed us before. But overall structure of the rally is still bullish. Overall background is still bullish. Yes. So it's, there is this confusion between the time frames, you know, the shorter time frame and much longer time frame. You have to concentrate on the big picture and you still have to analyze the short term picture as the possibility of some kind of, you know, a, a possible retest. Well, let's see what happens next. So here is your retest and it's very, very shallow. So even though we have this reaction and as I said, this is more on the intraday uh, level. So we had two reactions. 
even by these two reactions, we could conclude that first of all, the second reaction is a little bit smaller. So the downward swing distance is diminishing. And then also look at the volume signature. If we are in the reactionary mode, which looks so bullish, then supply is definitely going down on the decrease of the volume signature. That happens contextually in the upper part of the trading range, suggesting that, first of all, continuation is possible. That's number one. And secondly, if we're going to do that, we possibly could overcome that 41, 43 level, and which would totally confirm the whole formation as being an accumulation. William? Yep, you've hit the down on the head. I mean, for me now, we're working our way through this level. Uh, that the next major obstacle is to, oh yeah, we're not taking out the high of this selling climax bar. That's what my eyes are drawn to now. And look at the approach. You know, we are going to need, we, we, well, two things need to happen for us to break through here. We need to absorb a little or a big, you know, widespread breaking through with volume because there will be, you know, that seller's memory, uh, as you put it, at the top of this bar here. So that's what I'd be thinking mm -hmm. right now. All but right. this approach, again, another well, let's, day green. Yeah, let's outside. let's see if, if that level is going to be broken uh, the right away or not. Okay, well, the first down bar, so maybe, I mean, like, it's not a very significant down bar, no. but just because this is the first bar, let's just stop here for a second. Um, I mean, supply is not necessarily there. I mean, supply signature is very low. The result to the downside is very low as well. Uh, would you be expecting a continuation here? Uh, I would expect a little bit of downside continuation, but I would be noting, using our analogs over here, Roman, look at the supply bars in the same area before. Slightly high, yeah, it is. So it's the, low, it's the lowest volume down bar in this vicinity. Again, that's bullish. And how, where do, when does this occur? Well, after this. So I don't feel threatened by that bar, but would I expect downside continuation? Well, well, well the key to me, William, is just this bar right here. As long as, if we're going to have a reaction within the body of this bar, I think we're totally fine. And this yep. is kind of like a naturally expected event. Yep. Supplies coming in at different spots here. Um, so we could have a reaction here, but the, the key, I think, is the result, um, which might be suggestive of, okay, maybe there's going to be another push to the upside. Mm. But once we're in the position, we don't really care at this point. We're just kind of observers at this point. We want to see... What's going to happen next? Okay, okay, so here is that reaction that is coming in. How would we assess that? But we're still in the vicinity of this bar. But this volume expands, the spread expands. We do get a little, uh, a little bit of buying off the lows, a bit of demand. Uh, I'd expect, I would expect some downside continuation from this bar. But I think this is the bar now. Well, you know, coming into this high yeah. volume. So we're going to test this bar essentially now. Uh, and the lows, obviously, of this bar. Yeah, but so far, I don't see anything damaging. No, I don't no. see anything threatening. I mean, supply levels are slightly elevated, but they are not aggressive as, you know, like supply coming in in the downtrend. So, it's, and behind it, immediately behind it, is just a lot of demand that is going to be very, very supportive. Um, um, and I think that you are absolutely correct about this bar. This is the most important bar uh, in this sequence of the sign of strength rally. And this is, if we're going to react, this is going to be the first level that I would be thinking like, okay, this is, this is where it could go and then reverse. Yeah, this, this is my line in the sand, this bar. If we break under here, I don't know what's occurring. Like, I, I wouldn't, you know, my analysis would be incorrect. So for me, this bar is of vital importance. Okay, well, let's see what happens next. We're continuing to the downside, but, yeah, but I mean, look at the spread. The spread is diminishing. When we have this diminishment, uh, diminishing spread and the volume stays the same. So it's not like supply is coming in with more aggression. So supply stays at the same level and yet result is starting to diminish. So we could be expecting some kind of reversal right here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in at the level of the support of this big bar that we've talked about. William, I would be considering here maybe establishing a second position. Yeah, yeah. We need some kind of trigger, some confirmation. 
some form of demand or and we could we, we could play with this in a different way tactically right so we could have buy the trigger stop. yeah, yeah. The, the stop <laughs> buy above this level the high of the last bar that commits to the downside or um i would not be uh against william even just buying the close of this bar just because of the you know uh such more bullish characteristics on this uh last two down bars mm -hmm. okay well let's see what happens next here's our next bar and i would say this is probably this confirming I bar think there's we, a, yeah there's a confirmation yeah, this is your point of entry I did not enter uh, necessarily right on this bar. I was just holding the position off the low of this bar. Um, and But this was a really good bar to add. Um, it just does not necessarily require a lot of demand. Look at how demand signature has yeah. diminished uh, substantially. It kind of reminds me of these bars where the volume signature is low, demand is low, and yet the price starts to go up. Now, there is a slight difference between let's say this bar and those three or four bars uh, from the beginning of this rally where the spread is slightly increasing more so that's encouraging as well yeah but also the context this bar occurs after down bars and it's still having the same result and here we're pushing up so then again here this shows a little bit of additional strength uh but, but, but for me logically this is a natural place for the market to find sellers. And if and if there was active selling participants, we wouldn't be hanging around like this. We would just push on up, up thrust, you know, see widespreads, volume come in to the downside. So by thinking like that and understanding what's occurring here, we're just disconfirming supply uh, by, by looking at this from a macro perspective. Uh, All right. Very good. I like this action here with the decreasing mm -hmm. volume. So well, let's good. move on. Here's the next bar. An attempt oh. to go down. We're looking at this supply tail. There is an intraday attempt to go down. And what does it produce? Does it commit to the downside? No. Does it produce the significant penetration of the support? No. And then volume is increasing. And behind that volume increase, the price is going up aggressively, significantly up off the low of that first initial selling. So we know there is a presence of the demand and demand produces a really great result. The close of this bar is above the most important bar that yep. uh, we have identified. And Ford to me, that's another point of entry, William, right here. Ah, oh, I mean, this is this, this is superb, this two. bar, because it's technically, if you think on a five intraday time frame, this is a spring. Intraday spring. And look at the buying that comes off that five minute spring. Or, you know, the lower time frame spring. That's a fantastic result. And the volume, all, all signs are now saying higher prices. That's what I'm reading here. I think this is a very important bar in conjunction with our, you know, supply bar right here. Why? Because mm -hmm. here supply is occurring. And then right away, we see the absorption in the subsequent two bars where absorption is happening. So absorption number one at the higher level. Remember, guys, we started in the previous video saying that we need to have absorption at this higher level. We have had absorption throughout this area right here, which identify this whole structure as a possible accumulation. We launched the uptrend with emergence of the demand, uh, which we didn't have to have a lot. And then supply is coming in, first absorption at the higher level. I would say that this is the second absorption at the higher level. Not it only is. we are confirming the accumulation uh, bias, but I would argue that with this second absorption at this higher level, we're gonna break through. And uh, that's what absorption at this level is all about. It's just preparation for the breakout. Yeah, I, I like, so essentially, one, with this high volume, we see the presence of supply. We're in the same area. Now we get high volume, and now we see the presence of demand. Ergo, now we're ready to break, break on through. I like that thought process. Good, Roman. Yeah. All right, well, let's move on, and let's see if we're going to have this breakout. Okay, good continuation. Really yeah, continuation, really good bar. I mean, yep. uh, the volume signature is slightly less than on the previous bar, but I mean, we would be expecting that still some supply is present here. I mean, those bears, they were relentless at this point, still kind of like screaming, you know, we're going to go down to 10,000. So their presence, you're going to see in that volume signature, but this is the highest close for this trading range period. Yes. So, and that's the significance of that.
Okay, and then we're just breaking through to 44,000. Uh, William, so what do you see here? Yeah, uh, with I'm, these? Seeing, I'm seeing sustained volume. I'm seeing basically these three bars. It's kind of a bit like slight vertical absorption through this area. It's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm thinking. Instead of the, the classic Wyckoffian absorption process, we just have vertical absorption through this area. With the sustained volume, good positive price action. Again, just using the basics, Roman. Look at these four bars to come down. Look at these four bars to come up. Poor quality, poor selling quality, good buying. But not only that, not only is the buying better, but we're achieving something on this buying. Why? Well, because we're breaking through into brand new highs from the selling climax bar. Significant. This is significant here. Although there is still supply here because we can see that from the uh, from the spreads and the bars but it's telling me that the buyers are winning you know the bulls are eager here the and the sellers are unable to capitalize with the shown by the volume mm -hmm. yeah there is some short term presence of the supply that yeah, could suggest see. maybe like a one day reaction here um mm. but the overall you know trend is going to is up at this point yes okay so here is that you know, mini reaction that comes. And I would be expecting that, you know, just kind of grinding through this level where supply is going to be uh, emerging because uh, a lot of the sellers are still, you know, pretty actively shorting. You know, every time the price goes up to the new level, you know, we see the presence of sellers here. Um, it's just a matter of whether the buyers are more in control and they are at this point. Yeah, and so, we have yeah, we have a good analog here, Roman. Last time we was here, we had this down bar. Now we're breaking through. We have this bar. So how mm -hmm. will the next bar unfold? The last time was this bar. So we need to compare the next bar to this bar to see the current, uh, you know, strength or potential weakness going forward. Yeah, and I would say that this last bar has a little bit more of the supply signature yeah. than it does. the analog bar that we had uh, on the prior approach here. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, we could be in this kind of like upsloping structure that just goes up uh, because of the strength of the Bitcoin goes up and down, goes up and down, just because supply is occurring at this uh, level. And at the same time, time the overall uh, bias is bullish. So it's like the pressure from different time frames would create the structure, like a grinding through type of structure. Mm. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, that's the result. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit climactic, um, yes. just a little bit climactic here, I think, especially on the intraday. What do you think, William? Yeah, I mean, we can see, yeah, if we, if we draw a little channel here, we can definitely see we are moving quite hard. But again, we're still we're still pushing through. I mean, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of supply coming down. Uh, but we've overcome this bar. We've overcome the high of this bar now. But there's still to the left a lot of supply uh, to churn through. Um, I, I would expect some. So I would expect some choppy behavior now. Mm -hmm. um, some, you know, because this is we can still see the presence of supply due to the volume. You know, we're not look. Look at that comparatively. That's where there's a lack of selling pressure. Now we're pushing up with all this volume. We are, on a, you know there's a friction to the upside which of course is mm -hmm. reflected by the sellers so. and then there is a little bit shortening of the thrust i mean like we this yes. is the first push to the upside if if this is climactic you know short-term climactic right so we're talking only about the short-term climactic action here then the next push upward was not as big but again i think the main message here is this we are aggressively bullish and we're just thinking that, okay, well, you are in the place where we could have some kind of reaction grinding through type of uh, price action. Okay, next bar uh, comes with less supply um, you know, than the previous down bar. Um, but again, you know, we are stopping here, so we could potentially have that reaction. I also am noticing, you know, two days out of the last three uh, are down days. So yeah. uh, we probably are going to increase the downward result at some point, uh, just temporarily, short term. Yep, I agree. There's not nothing for me to add here. Okay, two down bars in a row. And again, attempt on this bar to go up, to continue the movement up and then close 
uh, below. So there is some kind of rejection on low volume signature. So that just suggests maybe demand is a little bit short term exhausted. Could we have another potential down bar here? Okay, William, well, what do you think here? Yeah, the spreads increase, the volumes increased a little. We close off the lows. Again, we're again a little downside cont continuation. What I'll be using here is the analog of these three bars from these three bars. And what do I see? Well, I see that this, this is weaker. No, uh, how can I wear this? This is stronger in terms of from a bullish bias. The, the selling quality is poorer on these three bars than these three bars. Uh, would I expect some downside continuation? Well, perhaps we could... Well, no, Roman. Look, look at the volume. It's actually decreasing. We're not getting any... There's no ease of movement to the downside. That's what I'm seeing from this reaction. Uh, again, so this will be the important bar. Got, from a very bullish standpoint, look, yeah, we've mm -hmm. got this lovely resistance breakthrough. I don't see anything threatening here. But there's still some supply there, but it's waning now. Mm -hmm. I think the key here just tactically is just to wait, uh, yes. you know, don't overanalyze this guys, you know, just like, uh, you know, just stay with the, your position at this point and allow the price to show you, you know, the maximum bearish character. Uh, if we are seeing some kind of, you know, potential stop in action here uh, to the upside, let it show you what it can do and then make a judgment of that judge the market by its own action. Okay, yes. well, let's see what happens next. Okay, good result. Although it's not the best break in the world. <laughs> you know, I like to see a valid break with 50% of the spread mm -hmm. closing above our area of structure. We don't really get a pop in volume above this local resistance, but we're making high progress and the sellers need to prove themselves. Look at these three bars, as I said, to prove these three bars. This is, this is a very good result. Uh, but we're not, there is one thing I am noticing though, we're not pushing up like we once did. Volume is decreasing to the upside and we are approaching an area of supply over here. So, you know, we've got to be careful, but I would, I'd still expect upside continuation. There's nothing to do here. Okay. Well, a minute let's... and a half left guys. Okay. Well, let's kind of open this up a little bit more. Okay, so reaction starts again. Um, and this is probably the biggest reaction right here uh, that we're seeing, you know, since this low. Um, yeah. So, I mean, here at this point, we might be expecting some kind of uh, more of a trading range, but what shape it's gonna take? Is it gonna take a shape of like down sloping trading range? Or is it going to be an upsloping trading range? Or is it going to be a horizontal trading range? I think there is a lot of momentum here um, in the first push and the second push suggestive that we might have another attempt to push here and kind of slightly overcome this high just because momentum is pretty high here, but it starts to diminish. So we need to see that diminishing uh, momentum characteristic in, in the structure that maybe like, is trying to go up, but there is some pressure. So again, yeah. you know, we could kind of start foreseeing what kind of structure we could potentially have. We uh, certainly again. have short enough of thrust to the upside. We can see mm -hmm. this in the waves pushing up. You now each successive move is making less and less progress to the upside. Uh, and, that, and, and, and importantly, where is that occurring? Well, it's occurring into potentially an area of supply here. So, uh, and this be bar becomes extremely important uh, yes. in this area. So it kind of like creates this selling zone, as we call it. It does, yeah. and it just creates that pressure. So again, the upward momentum, which is really good, is in counting you know more, more substantial selling at this level that we haven't overcome through, and that's what creates the price structure. Uh, you know, for what it is, mm -hmm. I think this is a gentleman. Good place to yep. stop yeah stopping your momentum is very difficult <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fantastic so anyway thank you both for a great session check out their workshop go to wyckoffanalytics.com to learn more william and roman great session thank you so much <laughs>